Hello, kamusta? My name is Rando and welcome back to yet another Transformers video review. And in today's rainy forecast, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Universe Ultra Class Decepticon Onslaught. How do we attack them on Cybertron? Their defenses are many times stronger than we are, no matter how much energon you give us. So straight off the bat, I'm going to say it right here, right now. You're not going to have a good time finding this figure online. It's going to be pretty difficult and you're going to have to... Find a couple of secondhand stores where you can get this guy. I'm not really sure where, but anyway, this particular figure right here is almost um, is it 14 years old? Yeah, it's around 14 years old. 14 years ago, ever since I got this guy out from the toy store, and this particular figure right here comes from the Transformers Universe line. So once again. I'm not really familiar with the Transformers Universe line. But from what I can tell, the Transformers Universe uh, design aims for uh, a much more modern and futuristic uh, design that is compared to the G1 original concept. And from what I can tell, most of the figures that are in the Transformers Universe line have that kind of aesthetic wherein they stick to the original source material but having a touch of modern design and also some futuristic touches to itself. Onslaught right here is not an exemption from that kind of style. So if you have any idea what Transformers Universe is, like the particular line itself, go ahead and comment down in this comment section below. I might actually get an idea from what Transformers Universe actually is. And thank you guys so much for actually engaging in my videos. So setting the line aside, let's talk about this particular character as well. Onslaught right here is one of the most um, recognizable Transformers characters out there besides, you know, Megatron, Starscream, and most of the other Decepticons out there. Onslaught right here has that, what would you call it, has that um, presence when it comes to most Transformers figures. Onslaught right here is one of the biggest, uh, in my opinion, is one of the biggest looking Transformers that I've ever seen from most Transformers characters. And from what I can tell, Onslaught's design focuses more on the much more militaristic side, being that his Generation 1 design having him with a uh, military truck design, they decided to give him a little upgrade, well, probably a downgrade, but... I'm kidding aside, this is a very cool upgrade for Onslaught if that's their main target from way back then because as you can see right here, Onslaught is not your typical uh, flatbed military truck as he was from the Generation 1 source material. He is in this very bulky looking SWAT tank. Well, as you can tell, with the decals right here, which is very impressive considering that this is a very old figure, the decals are still intact on this figure. even. This decal right here, it's still pretty intact and I'm really surprised that it's paint it doesn't even fall off. Like, even though it's a simple paint, like nothing chips at all, everything is very paint is painted very well on this figure. The gold uh, paint doesn't fade, well some of it is unfortunately losing that uh, color because of age, but it doesn't it doesn't scratch off like most Transformers figures these days. Like, what have you been doing with your uh, quality design, Hasbro? Look at this. This is what designing looks like. Aesthetic-wise, this guy is pretty simple. And for its uh, design as a SWAT truck, this looks actually pretty menacing for a truck. Because with the monochromatic um, kind of... Uh, Navy blue, I would not even call it monochromatic because it's kind of a grayish, navy bluish kind of color. And with the gold and with some of the hints of transparent orange plastic that is present throughout the figure, it makes for a pretty awesome looking vehicle. And it makes it really, really cool from most other Transformers figures with a militaristic kind of design because, let's face it, most of the... Um, Militaristic design Transformers don't have that kind of justice when they're given the color. Some of them have monochromatic colors and they look good. But then there are some Transformers figures who are monochromatic, but the color just seems pretty off. But also right here, even, even though there's just a few 
uh, colored parts here and there's the outstanding uh, base color which is the grayish kind of navy blue he still pr looks pretty cool from every angle and from every distance so for this vehicle modes um, gimmicks there's nothing much that there is to it but these parts right here they're supposed to stick up like this but you know because of me being an ape when I was a child Monkey. I didn't handle it carefully so when I let it go it's loose so this is not much of a problem you can the shield fell off you can fix this right here just add a little bit of a um, super glue but not too much just put some few in there and um, keep moving it until it, dry, it dries off but make sure it still moves and uh, yeah as you can see right here you can see the kibble already off the robot and you can kind of see Onsa's head right here so yeah so <laughs> As you can see right here, the shield fell off, spoiler alert, this is actually part of the robot which is a shield. And for uh, integration system for the shield in the vehicle mode, this is actually pretty clean. It works well as a part of the turret and without the shield, this is what the turret looks like and uh, it actually looks pretty cool. There's this transparent orange plastic right here. Transparent. Uh, orange plastic right here and there's also a bit of gold right here which is actually pretty neat there's also the siren lights right here and there's actually a button right here now unfortunately because I was too lazy to get any batteries for batteries for this guy and I'm too lazy to do anything about it the guy this guy's lights and sounds doesn't actually function at all but if you did press the button once the siren lights will turn on and there's a uh, kind of like a siren sound that will be released from the sound system and if you press it again a machine gun sound will uh, come out from the sound system of the figure and for the batteries you're gonna need I think two AA batteries which are not included with the figure or was it included with the figure when I bought this I don't really remember but yeah so that is all for the overall gimmick and also the turret can swivel from right to left but unfortunately it cannot spin 360 degrees because understandably understandably because it might um, affect the lights and sound system of the overall figure itself speaking of lights and sounds that's not the only thing that actually has lights and sounds if you come under here and just split the leg open you can kind of see that onslaught right here has this has this wheel that when you spin it the gear inside also spins but why is there a gear there that is actually a pretty cool uh, design that Hasbro kind of did as you can see right here below just near his waist there's this little black button that when the gear spins it actually hits the button and it makes a truck running a running truck sound which is actually a pretty cool feature and as given for any most uh, vehicle modes in transformers which have wheels the wheels do freely spin but unfortunately for this middle left wheel specifically it doesn't spin freely so you always hear this clicking sound so when you roll him on any surface it doesn't spin with most of the tires so you're gonna have to kind of give it a little uh, force to make it click to make the gear click with the button to make the sound effect so now I just spoiled the transformation a little bit let's get to it
here we have Onslaught in his robot mode and holy crap. I actually kind of forgot how big this figure was or how big this figure is until now. So as you can see right here, Onslaught in his robot mode doesn't look that far from what he actually looks like from the generation 1 version. This particular figure right here actually looks a lot bulkier and looks a lot more menacing compared to his generation 1 counterpart. But of course, Hasbro, uh, the Transformers universe line still pays homage to their original looks and when I say that they were aiming to give these figures a much more realistic and modern design, they did not actually fail to do that. As you can see right here, there are some few changes that they gave to Onslaught compared to his Generation 1 um, counterpart. His head design is a little bit... Uh, a little bit changed it's still the same as it looks like from the generation 1 version the chest is um, wider and much more broader compared to the excuse me flatter version of the generation 1 and he has this Decepticon logo right here but from what I can tell from everything from top to bottom it doesn't actually look that much different to the generation wall. Well, of course, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of change and differences, but you can, as you can see, but for me, it still looks pretty close to the generation one counterpart. And what I really love about this figure is its size. I mean, look, th these are my two hands. So speaking about sizes, so if you compare his size to an SD Gundam, you can see that he actually kind of towers from the model kit itself. He's a big guy. And here he is next to a 1144 scale high grade Gundam which is the Granddaddy Gundam. And here he is next to a 1100 Master Grade Shin Musha Gundam. And wow, even the Shin Musha Gundam is dwarfed by the size of Onslaught here. And if you're expecting a different kind of Onslaught character slash figure right here, and if you're thinking that this is not Onslaught and you're probably thinking that the real Onslaught is the Bayformer version, get your ass out of my house. What the fuck? That is not the real Onslaught. Michael Bay is just throwing in random Transformers name into random robots that doesn't even connect them to the original characters from the generation. How are you gonna call that a proper Transformers movie? So now moving in into the guy's gimmicks and possibility. First, let's see one of his kind of cooler gimmicks right here. If you go right through his right arm and press this little black button here. That was kind of sad. I'm not sure what kind of weapon this is, but it's still a really cool feature that Hasbro decided to put in a spring launching gimmick on this weapon right here. You know, no... Uh, handheld weapons right here well uh, considering that these back of the turrets can be held by his hands but I'm not gonna do that because they're already loose I'm not willing to spend uh, most of my super glue in attaching these guys back in there so yeah there's no handheld weapons for Onslaught and the, this is the only kind of uh, weapon that he has I think this is some sort of a Ton baton or a gun, I'm not really sure. I don't express my second amendment, but it's like this. Just like any other police officers right there, you get a riot shield or a shield, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But unfortunately, the shield posing that you're gonna get from this guy is a little bit awkward, and considering that the shield is pretty loose, let's get to his posability.
So for this guy's overall possibility, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10 or at least a 6.5 out of 10. I'm not gonna deny that his possibility is somehow limited due to the fact that he doesn't have anything on the waist and that his head can only do so much possibility, like it can only do the basic left or right. But yet again, his possibility is still pretty good for an act for actual for a big figure actually, and it still really is impressive how the ratchet joints are still uh, present in the figure despite its old age. And I'm still pretty in love with the simplicity of this figure, even though that some of its gimmicks are limited, it's not that much compared to most Transformers figures these days. It still brings out the classic Transformers figures that Hasbro actually used to do back in the day. There are a few things that I would like to point out about the figure is that some of its parts are a little bit hollowed. But it doesn't change the fact that this figure is still pretty solid and it can still stand up like it actually is a non-transforming yet solid looking figure. And for its overall aesthetics, I'm gonna give this an overall 9 out of 10 and it's a very very cool design for Onslaught. It pays homage to the generation 1 version of Onslaught unlike the fucking Bayformers version. What the fuck even is that? Why would you make him into... I, I, I don't even know, was that a crane truck? Was that a garbage truck? <laughs> I, fucking, that's not even Onslaught, that's just a long haul reuse design. You use a dead Transformers redesign for another goddamn robot that doesn't even make any fucking- And one thing to point out, the lights and sounds actually still works with this guy if you press the buttons on the turret and his eyes can actually light up, but again, I'm too lazy to do it. I'm not planning to do it, I don't want to waste my batteries on this kind of figure because it's not that eco-friendly. But yet again, if you wanted to put some batteries on him, you're gonna have to God. open his... Hold up. You're gonna have to open his chest, unscrew these parts, take off the cover, and put in the batteries in there. And fun fact, I actually kind of remember that Onslaught is part of the Transformers Combiners called the Combaticons, was it Combaticons? I'm not really sure any forms at all of the Combiner robot. But anyway, for the overall verdict of this figure, I'm gonna give him a 7 out of 10. Not perfectly okay, it's not that good, it's not that bad, there are some limitations to the figure and I don't know anything about the franchise of it, which is kind of unfortunate knowing that this is a very interesting character and he's very very cool but aesthetic wise and looks wise this figure still stands out from most of the transformers universe figures well compared to power glide and to some of his other bros from the transformers ultra class line even though with a simple blo blocky aesthetic and some of the already present colors in the vehicle mode the robot mode actually translates more color compared to the vehicle mode which is actually a very smart move by hasbro more silver accents, more golden parts, golden PP, pee -pee. and also there are some of these blue parts that are not present in the vehicle mode, which is actually a very cool design by Hasbro. So with that, I would say that this figure is still very good for its age. For the Transformers Universe line, it doesn't uh, it doesn't set it set it aside from the original source material, which is the Generation One onslaught, and I still. I'm pretty in love with this figure with the kind of a bad cop design because let's face it, there are barely any good cops these days. But anyway, political jokes aside, my name is Rando. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy the video, leave a like, comment down below and turn on your no notification bells for more videos like this soon. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and I'll see you in the next video review or whatever video that I'm going to be cooking up soon. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay inside your homes. Pa'alam! Never in my life have I grabbed a big blue cop. You think I was gonna say big black cop?